Okay, hi everyone, it's Moj Taylor here. Uh, gonna try and give you, well, I'm gonna give you uh, some of my thoughts on what to do if you've got no idea, or if you've got no idea what you actually wanna do when you're 15, 16, 17, 18, you know, when you're in those years, it's like year nine to year 13. I've never been so stressed as in that time, okay? Your body is still physically changing, you've got a driving, you got my driving test was the most nerve-wracking thing. I only passed third time. It was terrifying. And then on top of that, you've got things like coursework. You've got endless assessments. You've got exams. Uh, you will never be tested in terms of actual physical, real tests. You'll never be tested so much for the rest of your life as you will be from those ages. And yeah, you're going to get tested in the future, but they don't call it a test. In a job, every day is a test, but they don't necessarily make it a specific deadline and a qualification that you've got to get. They're just testing you every single day. But oh my God, I felt stressed when I was in school. Uh, I, I have therapy every month, not, not just because of school, but uh, I've really struggled um, from the ages of 15 to 25. I only started to actually feel properly confident of what I wanted to do in life from the age of about 25, 26. Um, I'll, I'll take you through a quick run through, right? Because this, uh, this video is about what to do if, if you basically have no idea, you know, no idea what you actually want to do with your life, all right? Firstly, it's a myth that anyone actually figures it out. I think all you can do is enjoy the journey every single day, okay? The journey, just as much as where you want to end up, you've got to enjoy, uh, you've got to be able to look back on every day and think, do you know what, it's been a good day. I always think you sleep better. You actually sleep better if you've earned your sleep in a way. Uh, it's a weird thing to think about, but earning your sleep. If I get into bed and I'm restless, to me it means I've not fulfilled the day. Okay, um, it means that there's, I'm, I'm constantly thinking, is there things I could have done? I know some people say they stay awake because you get entrepreneurs saying they're constantly thinking about what they want to do uh, coming up. But I have to, I think retrospectively, I think about what has happened that day and have I earned it? I always have a bed deep, a deep sleep. I'm talking layers of dreams, you know, where you wake up and you look like Ken Watanabe at the end of Inception, you know, where he's like really old, looks like a tortoise, and he's like, I've been waiting 100 years for you to come, Leonardo DiCaprio. I've been in this dream for ages. And then you wake up and you realize it's just the next day. I think you sleep better when you physically and mentally drained yourself to the point of exhaustion, but I mean like enjoying your hobbies, you can get exhausted, and that's a good way to approach learning and studying. Um, I know I'm getting off track, but I'll quickly tell you that when I was when I was 21, I had a year abroad because I did Spanish and drama at university, and oh my god, I, I I I spent a lot of time on my own. I think I was pretty depressed. I know that word gets banded about, but I, I started smoking. Uh, n not just roll-up cigarettes. I started smoking shisha, which I thought was healthy for you. It's not. It's like people who go around with clouds of um, apple sour smelling vape around them uh, in the street and they're like oh vaping's healthy no it's not you're putting smoke in your lungs okay uh, I was I was essentially vaping I was doing shisha in Andalusia uh, spending a lot of time on my own because I had very low confidence um, really didn't like talking to people I used to revise Spanish but it was in my room I had no idea what I wanted to do in my life I was thinking am I doing the right degree and you're always going to get that moment in any apprenticeship or degree where you start really questioning what the hell am I doing here uh, you're always going to get that but I was getting that day after day it was this endless cycle it was horrible um, I started dropping weight. I, I, I lost a load of weight. It's only when I look back on photos now, I go, oh my God. Um, dropped a load of weight. Um, I didn't like, to, didn't talk to my family for about three months when I got there. They probably thought I was dead. Um, and I didn't, I just, yeah, I, I didn't know what I was doing. So I just started smoking. I just started, and I had this amazing comfy armchair in this place I was renting in Spain. It was so, it was this big, deep brown armchair. Uh, it, it was like melting into a chocolate frozen yogurt. It was brilliant. It just sunk into this brown. It was brilliant. Uh, and I used to just sit there smoking. And I used to revise my Spanish. I used to go to my room, revise. Uh, but that's, I wasn't practicing the actual wider skills and the point of a, tra of, of a year abroad, which was to actually make you a bit more resilient. Um, I ended up getting a hernia. So I had to have an op I thought that was only what old men got. 
I feel like Benjamin Button. I got a hernia when I was 20 years old. Or I was hobbling about. Um, it's not. It's made me not that scared of old age because I've already experienced it. But I had to have an operation. I had to come. I had to come back. I had to cut my uh, year abroad on hold. Constantly, every day I was going. I've got no idea what I'm doing. What am I doing? That was always the question. What am I doing? I was back in my house in Cheshire. I didn't leave the house for a lot. And this is in January and February. It was horrible. I used to hobble for a little walk, be in severe pain. I've still got a big scar on my hip. But the point was. Uh, Oh, it was, it, it's tough. I had all that, and I think a lot of that was because in school, I never ever got someone to come in and just speak to me, or actually just for me, to just close my eyes, do some breathing exercises. I know that sounds a bit, you know, airy-fairy, but it's not, okay? You need to look after your mental health. Switch off your phone, ironically, I know you're probably watching this on a phone or an iPad, but switch off your phone, get rid of technology, and just sit down every single day, and calm yourself down, close your eyes and think about what do you actually want from life? What do you want? And I know some people go, oh, I don't know. I speak to so many students and they go, I'm really not sure, Moj, I don't really know what I want. Uh, yes, you do know what you want because it will never be the name of a job. It will be how you like to feel. And really it's about verbalizing the feelings, what you get every day inside the classroom, but also your hobbies and the, the activities you do. The main thing, I look back now, and it's come full circle. The things I used to love doing when I was a kid and when I was a teenager was always to do with performing, but it was to do with helping people. I used to have a little kind of deck set, like a little DJ set. I used to do my own like mixtapes, do my own radio show and be a DJ on it from the age of about seven. Uh, I used to, I used to love um, scripts. I used to love just being stupid on camera. Uh, I used to love, I, with my dad's VCR, I just used to film stuff on holiday, a lot of talking to camera before these things called selfies and vlogs existed. Um, and actually now I look back, what I wanted to do is I wanted to communicate with the world, I wanted to help people. But people were telling me in school, it was the pressure of just thinking, right, you need to come up with the name of a job now, when jobs are gonna change more than ever through history. In the next 10 years, jobs are gonna change more than ever. So yes, you might want to be a vet, a doctor, the world's still going to need those job titles, but the job roles are going to change because of how much technology integrates with them. So don't get too hung up on a job title. If you've got no idea what you want to do, okay, and if you're sat when you're 21, depressed in the middle of Andalusia, in a big chocolate frozen yogurt couch, sinking into the depths of depression, going, what am I doing while you're filling your lungs with shisha? Um, I would say, re I'm going to give you an acronym, okay? I'm going to give you an acronym, which is IDEA, okay? If you remember this, you should be fine. I'm going to write it at the bottom as well, uh, but uh, just think about this. I-D-E-A, okay? I-D-E-A. And if you remember what these mean, you'll be fine. First one is be inquisitive. I stands for inquisitive. Don't just sit there doing nothing, okay? I don't care if you say you're depressed, right? I've experienced it. I've experienced this feeling of not wanting to move, being debilitated, every single day feeling the same, not wanting to leave the house, feeling underconfident. But you can see, you just have to drag yourself up. You have to, okay? You have to just go for it. Pull yourself over the trench, okay? And get in the firing line of trying to experience a bit of life. I would have to try and do this, and, and soon it becomes a bit easier, and you start to want to do stuff. It's like people who say they don't have time for exercise. You've got time in the morning while the kettle's boiling to do some exercise, okay? It's just about being proactive, being willing to fail a bit, being willing to get out of your comfort zone. It's so important. So what I would say is the first I is, yeah, for idea is be inquisitive. Okay, you've got to do so. Not just researching online, yes, that's useful, but I mean actually getting up and getting out the house and doing things, okay? Don't just sit there and dream about what you want, okay? That's the first step, but you've got to go and actually do things. So be inquisitive. That includes as well, finding out what other people do is one of the best ways to figure out what you want to do, okay? What do I mean by that? Well, I mean any person you talk to, all right? Bug them. All right, nag them. Say, what do you do? And then ask them 20 questions. You can come up with the same 20 questions for everyone. What do you do? Why do you do it? What do you find difficult in a job? Uh, what do you find the most fun in your job? What's the work-life balance like? Okay, do you get to travel? Are you in the same place every day? How important is it that 
you work with a good team. What does a good team mean to you? What do you want from life? Ask them all these questions because I guarantee you most of those questions are going to be the things that come up in an interview anyway for you because in a good job they're testing you if they want to recruit you they're testing whether this job suits perfectly what you want from life and it suits what they're looking for. So it's like two Lego bricks going, it's a perfect match. So you need to be inquisitive. Best way you can find out what you want from life, find out what other people get from life. It's really important. For example, what do I get from life? Um, I get a good work-life balance because um, I get to basically help people. I get to tell them stories, I get to make them laugh, and when they laugh, it makes me laugh, it makes me feel good. Uh, I can sleep at the end of a day or the end of a week thinking I've helped over a thousand students this week to think about what they want to do and that gives me comfort because I know that when I'm an old man and I'm a tortoise because uh, I will look like a tortoise I will try and find a picture of my granddad my Chinese granddad it is mental but um, yeah think about um, what you want from life I think when I get old these people who hopefully have helped the quarter of a million students I've helped already in my life and hopefully it'll be many more uh, I think to myself do you know what hopefully they'll be looking after the world and shaping the economy and maybe even physically looking after me when I'm old because I might have been a 16 year old who I helped to become a doctor or a 16 year old you know 50 years ago who's now an architect because he thought about what he wanted from life from my talk so um, be inquisitive number two is do do things, which is kind of linked to number one. Do things, get up, do things. Nothing is a failure. It's just a learning process. It's about the journey, like I said. I had the worst work experience I can imagine when I was about in year 10 or year 11. It was so boring. But what I learned from that, because I was in an office the whole time, was I don't want to work in an office. I can't physically sit there. First, I learned I need to be on my feet, okay? So even if you take little tiny lessons like that, from what you're doing, it's massively helpful. It's hugely helpful because you work out just as much about what you want from life through experiencing, being brave enough to experience a bit of what you do. It's never wasted time. Number three of idea is evolve, okay? If you're gonna do, if you're gonna be inquisitive, leave the house and actually throw yourself into things and ask people what they want from life, feel a bit of what you want, um, don't just then not learn from it. You have to write stuff down. Write stuff down, um, record video diaries, record any ways, or create a mood board is a really good one. So my friend has a big um, cork board and anything they're inspired by, they put ticket, it's covered in like pictures, ticket stubs, inspirational quotes, okay? So that is their brain spilled out about, it's a constant uh, whiteboard, if you like, uh, from school. You know, like when you're learning, this is your life lesson spilled out on a chalkboard or on an iPhone, on your notes, or on a Samsung, whatever it is. Um, but whatever you do, spill this stuff out, okay? You need to evolve from what you're doing, okay? You need to evaluate and evolve. Actually, it's two E's really. Evaluate and evolve, because if this mood board is there, you can look at it every day and it's positive visualization. It does really work, guys. You just look at the first thing in the morning. Another thing people do is five things they're grateful for. They write those down, they look at them every single morning, or five things they're grateful for, and then five things that they want to achieve in the next month, the next 12 months. So do this visual board or this verbal board, and then you're constantly, it's like revision, you're constantly waking up, and it forces you to keep reassessing and moving forward. The fourth one is add, okay? I don't mean two plus two, which is four. That took way too long. Uh, number, by E, I mean add. I mean, add to what you're doing. More strings to your bow, you might have heard the phrase, okay? You've got to think about it. When you, if you, if you want to be a rounded person, and that is the most commonly used phrase by employers, you've got to, you have to add to the strings of your bow. There's no good getting an A-level. Great, you've got a B in English. Thousands of other people have got a B. I'm sorry, but they have. Thousands of other people might have an A in maths. Well done, you. Brilliant, but that will just get you to an interview. It doesn't mean you're interesting. It doesn't mean you can transfer that skill to useful life situations. It doesn't mean you've got a bit of grit, a bit of resilience. So when what by add, I mean, if you're doing one thing, it's not enough, okay? Yes, put, I mean, put your energy into as many different things as possible, and I mean your energy, 110% into maybe, if you're at university, let's say, an extra club, if you're in school, an after-school activity, or maybe uh, something on the weekends. I'm not just talking lazing around, I'm talking actually things you can talk about as a story. So then people say, what have you been up to? And you say, I've been getting an A in maths. They go, shut up. No, they say, I mean, outside of that. If you just go, mm, 
nothing, then they're gonna go, great, that's a really interesting person, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, you need to be able to actually take this other stuff. You need to be able to say, oh, as well as doing maths in school, I'm also in the cadets, or I'm doing Duke of Edinburgh's award, or I'm doing the National Citizenship Service. They're all three really good things, by the way. Uh, or I'm doing scouts, or uh, I'm doing a coaching award, like a junior coaching award um, with a local football team. Um, I'm doing a scuba diving qualification. Um, I'm climbing mountains, I'm climbing hills. I go trekking on weekends. I do football, hockey, netball, rugby, tennis, whatever it is. You need to be able to talk about stuff. It might even be extra wider reading. But not, I'm not talking Netflix, you know, hopping, channel hopping. I'm talking saying, oh, I watch a certain type of documentary. I follow a certain type of podcast. I might be making a podcast. I might be doing YouTube vlogs. Whatever it is, add to what you're doing because you will be surprised. All of these extra things, the irony is all of these extra things you do enhance in an amazing way the actual, actual thing you think you're just focusing on like maths, okay? Uh, or like philosophy or like veterinary science, whatever that subject is that you truly love in life. The more strings you add around it, the more it actually enhances your knowledge and your training and your skills in that specific thing and it makes you a more interesting person. So that's my idea guys, inquisitive, do things, um, evolve or evaluate and uh, add is the fourth one, idea, okay? I hope that's been useful for you. Please subscribe, please like and um, I think I pointed it to the right way. I'm never sure on this. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing these uh, quite a lot. So hopefully I'll see you guys again. Bye.